morning here. Welcome now to Factory Pack Sleepover Club, the bedroom quiz show that's finally combined hokey with pokey. <laughs> they said it couldn't be done, but we've done it. <laughs> and look at us now. My name is Dave Monkey, as I say, and sleeping over on tonight's show. Now, they are the sixth and seventh Power Rangers, uh, but sadly, the poo brown and beige coloured Power Rangers didn't test well with kids. <laughs> it's Nellie White and Xavier Makalides. <laughs> what a guy. And facing off against them in a bitter rivalry that hasn't been seen since two kids fought it out for one chair in the last round of musical chairs. <laughs> it's Andy Matthews and Beck Petratus. Yeah! <laughs> Uh, great to have you guys over. And uh, we were talking uh, just before Andy, and I cannot let this go. You recently said that you had met a Power Ranger. Can you please tell us about that story? Well, uh, I met a Power Ranger. He wasn't in character or anything. <laughs> great, uh, great talk. Uh, great talk. <laughs> I was on television. He was a Power Ranger from I think maybe season seven. He may have played the blue or the green Power Ranger. I don't recall. As I say, he wasn't in costume at the time, but he was very nice. And at no point did he try to kung fu me, even when I transformed into a much larger Andy. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, the green Power Ranger in the Japanese version was actually like a, an eight-year-old boy. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. It's just like a kid. Really and then, tall. Yeah, yeah. Just this little kid. And then, and then when he turned into the green Power Ranger, he got bigger. Because that's every kid's dream, <laughs> just to be bigger for a bit and then beat Aww. some people up and then be small again. Xavier actually just came back from Japan where he met that eight-year-old boy. <laughs> <laughs> I did, yeah. Well, that's what he told me. <laughs> <laughs> Cut that out, no, we can just keep inserting that shot over and over again at the end of the release. <laughs> Our first round tonight, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it is time for Dave's birthday bash. Now, we all celebrate our birthdays, of course, of course we do, but uh, looking around the world, many cultures think that when you are born dictates your entire future. Many cultures also believe in reincarnation, so we're going to look at when our contestants were born and see who was dying as they were being born and who technically they could be the reincarnation of. Each of you are going to pick one uh, of your birthdays and then I'm going to ask you a question to see if you remember your past life. So, Nellie and Xavier, which of you would you like to be quizzed upon? Nellie's birthday or Xavier's? Xavier's. My birthday. <laughs> would you like to hear about your, your birthday, Xavier? Well, can't we do Nellie's? <laughs> Yes, I think that was the nature of the question. <laughs> it's really up to you. <laughs> You're not a victim in this situation. You have all the powers, Amy. You can do either. <laughs> either is an option. So both options are open. Oh, yeah, 50 50. Let's pick one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll go with Nelly. Go with Nelly. Now, Nelly, yeah, you were born on June 14th, 1983. Is this correct? True that. True that. That's what my Tinder profile says. <laughs> Of course, Nelly, you are the reincarnation of R&B singer Philip Wynn. There he is on the screen. Uh, you are the singer of the band The Spinners and died whilst performing at a nightclub of a heart attack. So, uh, well done for that. But my question is... <laughs> my question for you is... You. <laughs> can you remember which of these now famous people's dad was your first manager? Can you remember? So for five <laughs> Was your first manager A, Enrique Iglesias' very famous dad, Julio Iglesias? Was it B, Robin Thicke's dad, Alan Thicke? C, Red Fru from LMFAO's dad, Barry Gordy? Could have been your manager. Or was it D, Nora Jones's dad, Ravi Shankar? Was it Ravi Shankar? Shanker. No, it wasn't Ravi Shanker. I just wanted to say Ravi Shanker. <laughs> I wanted to say Barry Gordy because he seems like a. He's, yeah, yeah, Alan Thick would be too busy mm. um, on the sitcom. Too what was it? tied up with <laughs> family. Yeah, he was too tied up with his family. <laughs> <laughs> was it family ties? No, he was. He was too busy growing some pains of his own. Oh, okay. Oh, he had both things going on, maybe. He had a lot going on. <laughs> and he, he couldn't Robert have done the trip. He had no time for Philip Wynn. No time for Philip Wynn. <laughs> Not at all. He could have saved me. Um, yeah, I'm going to say Barry Gordy. Yeah. He, yeah. Philip Wynn, of course, your first manager was none other than Alan Thicke. There oh, he is. Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> That's your first manager. Unbelievable. I know it is. It so is. he wasn't just growing some pains, he was growing some R&B artists as well. <laughs> <laughs> We'll just uh, insert that wink in there. Can you try to cry to me? Didn't just have a full house, he also had a full roster of talented musicians. <laughs> <laughs> when, he, when they sold gold records, he say, Did I do that? Yes, because I'm your manager. <laughs>
Family Matters. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> so I'm afraid uh, no points there to uh, Mr. Philip Wynn and his partner Xavier Michaelides there. <laughs> now we're going to uh, check in with Andy and Beck. Which one of you would you like to be quizzed on your birthday? Uh, well, uh, I think it should be Beck. What? Why? Well, because I was alive when you died, oh. and so I will remember it. <laughs> That's a good idea. Better, and I'll have I more details. I really did I'll be not understand anything that was being said earlier in the, uh, <laughs> in the 80s sitcom section, as no, because mm -hmm. I was born yesterday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, well, um, so you're going to be with Beck? No, yes. yes. Well, Beck, can you confirm your birthday is October 18th, 1990? That is my birthday. You're very, uh, qu quite young. Okay, we're going to uh, check in and see <laughs> who was dying back in 1990. You are the reincarnation of none other than uh, Art Blakey. There he is, a, uh, a famous jazz drummer, wow. of course. Oh. Uh, you were a band leader, a drummer, and uh, were described as having a big appetite for music women and food. It's the perfect trifecta there for you, Beck. Yes. Um, so much more successful before I was alive. That's right. <laughs> but my question for Everything you... Everything went downhill. Yeah, it did. <laughs> my question for you, Beck. Can you remember, as Art Blakey, which of these facts is true about you? Number one, you invented the modern bebop style of drumming. <laughs> bebop, it's a funny word, isn't it? <laughs> It is a funny word. <laughs> it is, it is, quite it quite is a funny word. We Comedy. should take some time yeah. to think about this is that. Great. <laughs> I want you to pause this video at home and just take some time to think about. It. Well, I can think I just everyone. Think of, can I ask is the second one? He invented a rock steady style of drumming. <laughs> rock steady and bebop. Uh, oh! Uh, come on, that was that was solid. <laughs> <laughs> that was solid. That was solid. Shredder. Right. Shredder. <laughs> <laughs> Back to Scotland. What? Anyway, keep going. Fact number two: <laughs> you only ever drummed with your eyes closed. Whoa. Fact number three: in the sixties, you set the record for the most drumsticks broken in a single performance. Or fact number four: you were the first recorded musician to throw a TV at a hotel window. This is interesting. Aren't like you. I actually used to be a drummer. I used to drum. Did yes, you really? Yeah. Of course, yes, I when you were Art Blakey. Were you oh, when I was Art Blakey. Yeah. No, but in your, in your life in since 1990. In my second life. Mm -hmm. You only ever drummed with your eyes closed. See, Dude has his eye closed in the picture. Definitely in that photograph. Yes, but I feel like, like only ever drummed with your eyes closed. Surely when you're starting out, just to know where the kit is. <laughs> you know, just like... <laughs> There's, 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 you know, 360 degrees, you want to be able to narrow it down to sort of a window or, and then you can flap maybe, about within that. They well, call was it he, was he a jazz drummer? That's a technical term. <laughs> was he, you, you were a jazz drummer, that's yeah, Sorry, yes. I was a jazz drummer. Yes. Well, jazz, it's not that important to hit the right thing. You just Absolutely. Sort of around. You just throw the drumsticks at him, you get a good beat. Uh, okay, and... <laughs> I don't think, no. Nah. Look, I actually think that that, that really stands know. a chance of being a fact. The, the inventing the, the modern bebop style of drumming is certainly a very boring fact. No. Um, that's boring enough to be true. Uh, <laughs> this musician to throw a TV out the window, I'm surely that happened before 1990. Uh, that was your death. Very think, unless you died from throwing a TV out the window. <laughs> <laughs> Just because you died in 1990 doesn't mean the first time you threw a TV out the window. Oh, <laughs> shit! The moment oh, you no. died. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was hard. <laughs> He was the first person to do it. They hadn't got the technique down. No. They hadn't learned that you're supposed to let go of the television yeah. when you throw it out the window. <laughs> Jumped out with it. Was a disaster. Uh, he really we all need sure. martyrs, don't we? Maybe, uh, maybe he didn't open the window and just smashed it through. Back. Yeah, right. <laughs> didn't even make it out of the window. <laughs> this is a poor choice. <laughs> Oh. And that's why he drummed with his eyes closed. The drumstick flying by the TV. <laughs> 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 it's a decision. I'm going to go with you only ever drummed with your eyes closed. You guys are going to go with that? Mm -hmm. Art Blakey herself? Himself? Yeah, I believe that. That is the fact? I yes. Remembered. Well, the true fact about you, Mr. Art Blakey, is that you uh, invented the modern ah. bebop style of drumming. Ah, the boring oh. one. The boring yeah. one. <laughs> yes, that is the only true fact. <laughs> Uh, who knows if you ever broke a lot of drumsticks or threw shit out of a window, but you did invent bebops. I'm afraid if we check in at the end of round number one, uh, both teams are tied on zero points. Yay! Yay. <laughs> <laughs> and
next round tonight, guys, is the only round on Facty Fact that actually deals with facts. It's called Fact, Fict, Fake. Now, I'm going to present three statements to each team about a certain topic. One of them is factual, one is fictitious that I've changed a little bit, and one is completely made up. Completely fake. So all you have to do is spot which one is factual, which one's fictitious, and which one is fake. Put them in the right order. I'll give you a point for each one you correctly identify. So our first topic tonight is for Andy and Beck. Thank you. You are answering questions or identifying facts on amazing sausage dogs. <laughs> amazing sausage dogs. So it's going to be three. Specialty this subject. Is, uh, is this uh, sausage dogs that are amazing or the process of causing sausage dogs to experience amazement? <laughs> <laughs> to say it's a Two little... very different fields, yeah, yeah. let me tell you. <laughs> well, we, uh, we've combined both fields for the first time okay, tonight. Cool. <laughs> Your first fact. This is Amazing Sausage Dogs by presenting them with pictures of sausage dogs <laughs> that are frankly amazing. <laughs> <laughs> they can be impressed by their own kind. Was the frankly like a sausage joke or did you just say yes, frankly? Yes, it was a... Oh. Frankly. <laughs> Alright, yes. fact number one. Brutus is a sausage dog who goes <laughs> skydiving with his owner. Mm -hmm. yeah. Might be true, might be fictionalised, or it might be made up completely by me. Number two, five of the 17 oldest ever living dogs, as recognised by Guinness World Records, are sausage dogs. Five of the top 17. Might be made up, or it might be true. <laughs> or number three, Pete is a sausage dog that has to permanently wear sunglasses because he has a rare <laughs> eye condition. Just imagine that, just imagine it. <laughs> so good. I'm sure I have seen a sausage dog skydiving. Is it Brutus? I just don't, I don't know if I picked you up on that. You spend far too much time on regular sausage dog yeah. websites. <laughs> ah, sausage not dogs. Not amazing sausage dogs. Not amazing, no, not sausage, amazing dog sausage, dog sausage dogs. Brutus no. is a sausage dog who goes skydiving with his owner. That would be fantastic because mm. just when he's about to, the owner is about to jump out of the plane, every time he could turn to Brutus and he could say, et tu Brute, and Brute would give him a little <laughs> nod oh. and then they would jump out together. Um, so for that alone... Uh, Does Brute stab him mid-air? <laughs> <laughs> always with the little knife and the yeah. cutting the sh parachute. Uh, I mean, there's some medi medical knowledge. Oh, yeah, that's Chris. what this needs. Yeah. Do s sausage dogs, are they particularly well? I feel like... Not so much. Ah, yeah. You think like, of the sort of the inbreeding and the... Yeah, the... and the, they're like very low to the ground. They're easy hanging for predators. Yes. It's really low for yes. tiny predators. Oh, so you think oh. their backs would give out? They probably would. Yeah, I don't think a, they'd live very to an long. old age. No okay. purebreds do. They're all horrible. Yeah, so two. All... Two, we're going to say is... No, inbred. they're dying, guys. Don't... Oh, they're dying. Yeah, don't buy purebred dogs. I'm, of one of my dogs at home, <laughs> its its brain is too big for its skull, and that's a basic problem. <laughs> like, that's like, out of everything ever, you're like, probably get that right if you want to live. And what do you do? Like, how do you manage a condition like that? Do you try and oh, just, just stop it from of... learning things? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, just keep don't it. Don't introduce keep the it. Don't, Get away from the box! Don't introduce it <laughs> to any new people. I would just stand as corner. far away as I could until it wasn't noticeable anymore. <laughs> 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 you stand away, well, then brain looks small. Yeah, exactly. To the point where it's fine. What a way to do with problems. <laughs> Just walk away so you can't really see it. I would hate to go to the doctor who, when you had a tumour, said, well, it's big, but it's not so big from over here. <laughs> <laughs> We like found it. a way to reduce the <laughs> size of the tumour by walking to the other side of the room. If I stand in the waiting room, it's not a problem. Is it? I can't see it at all. Yeah. There's no traces of it whatsoever. Jesus. I'm a distance healer. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it says in your business. Kelly, <laughs> <laughs> distance healer. I practice extreme Reiki. Right. Um, oh. You hand them a business card, and by the time they look up, you're like 10 blocks away. <laughs> <laughs> Looking good. Looking good. Looking good. I can't see anything wrong with you. <laughs> I text them and I say everything's going to be fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, look, sausage we're going to say dog. that uh, three, Pete, the sausage dog with the permanently wearing sunglasses, we're going to say that's... No, that's... Ficked. Oh, mm, fake. Oh, so mm. we're going to say that's fake. That's fake. So that's fake. fake. We're going to say that Brutus, you're going to say that's true because we want it to be. Yes. And yes, we're going to say true. two... Uh, is uh, is fictitious. fictitious. Yes. So you're going the order, fact, fict, fake. One, Correct. two, and three. Yes. We're going to find out. Uh, number one, Brutus. That's Yay! fact, baby. That's one. Yay! That's right. That's two, that's Brutus. Oh, yes, he's oh. there. Number two, five of 17 oldest ever living dogs, the sausage dogs. You've said fict. 
And it is indeed yeah. fictitious. Yeah. Oh, so, come on, so third one. It's, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's fictitious, I should say. Four of the top 17 dogs that have ever lived are Shit. oldest living dogs, are sausage wow. dogs. So they do live yeah. quite a long time. I thought it seemed a bit high. <laughs> <laughs> Just one, one too many. Yeah. <laughs> too hopeful, too hopeful. Yeah. And uh, you've probably already worked out that number three is, of course, fake. I have a dog at home called Pete, and he is not a sausage dog, and he does not wear sunglasses. So there you go. But he is a cracking dog. <laughs> Hello, Pete. <All> right. <laughs> so you guys have scored a total of three out of three. <gasps> a hard act to follow with Nelly and Xavier. Your... Oh, quickly before that, do you want to see a photo of Brutus? Yeah, yes. yeah, 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 totes. Here he is, yeah! Oh. He goes skydiving. He's wearing sunglasses. <laughs> so, uh, back in any three out of three, a perfect score there. A hard act to follow with Xavier and Nelly. Now, your questions tonight, your facts or statements, are all about music number ones. Looking at the American uh, Billboard oh, Hot 100. Number yep. ones on that. So, we have three little statements for you. Which is fact, fictitious and fake? Number one, the last instrumental number one hit on the Billboard 100 was Chariots of Fire, back in 1982. <laughs> Fact number two, in total, Boys to Men have spent more weeks at number one than Michael Jackson. <laughs> Boys to Men. Or number three, between Wham and his solo career, George Michael holds the record for the most number one hits on the Billboard 100. So one's factual, one's fictitious, and one is complete bullshit. What do you think? Um, wasn't the... Did uh, Tubular Bells become before or after Chariots of Fire? Because wasn't that uh, number one instrumental? I think we all know that I know everything about Tubular Bells. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that you are. No, I thought knows about Tubular Bells. As long as you have no more follow-up questions, the answer is yes. <laughs> Do you not remember what uh, Alan Thicke taught you? <laughs> <laughs> Write a rapey song about women. That's what his son did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you just threw your hat. No, look, it's a hat, but you can't repeat it. It's a one-time action. That's why you... It's you good. Just do that lightning. Yeah. You, you got to hold on to that moment. Yeah. Mm. So it's right. worth really it. Let it go. So you're thinking you're that think maybe about it and uh, do it. Um, uh, Chariots of Fire might have been pipped by Tubular Bells. You thinking? But maybe that's earlier. Maybe Tubular Bells is earlier because Tubular Bells was then used in The Exorcist. And the Exorcist was before 1982. All right. I've made it hard for myself. <laughs> <laughs> so remember when? So we've eliminated the Tubular Bells. Good. <laughs> yeah. So Thank Tubular God. Bells is out. Forget Tubular Bells. All right. Like Back to what we do have. <laughs> I, like I won't lock in Tubular Bells. Lock, don't lock in Tubular Bells. <laughs> you crazy? No. Tubular Bells is out. Um, um, does the audience know anything about Tubular Bells? <laughs> <laughs> what does the audience think about Tubular Bells? <laughs> Throw it to the audience. Does the audience remember Tubular Bells? Yes. I've got two. I've got a big yes and a big no. Right. <laughs> it's a great tell song. Tubular hey. Bells is actually one of the best. There's a group in Sydney who perform it, just I two I thought guys. we were trying to get away from Tubular Bells. <laughs> you're right, you're right. <laughs> just two guys Sorry. perform Tubular Bells. <laughs> like well. Me and Andy went into the question, which is like, oh yeah, probably that one. They're trying to use, like, knowledge. Yeah, about you're Tubular not Bells. You're right. <laughs> you just got it. It's not relevant. Uh, <laughs> okay, so, so the way you guys do it is you pick the one you want to be right. Yeah, yeah. To be, to be fact. So yeah. the one I totally want... Um... <laughs> <laughs> Yes. I want number one. I want Chariots of Fire. To be true. Yeah, to be but, then, but then that, that knocks out Chief Bells. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Because so we, uh, have we have no, look, narrowed we, it no, down to nothing. Yeah, we are no closer, <laughs> but we're not further away. So um, <laughs> There is some sort of something. With I think number two is depressing enough to be true. All right, so two oh. is fact. Yeah, two uh, is fact. <laughs> um, so, um, three is... George sorry. Michael is... is Ficked. Ficked. Yeah. Meaning the instrumental is fake. Yeah. So it goes, fake, ficked. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> <laughs> Let me throw something else in here. Okay. The song I'm Blue by Apple 65. <laughs> no, oh, yes. I like this. I like is that Isn't that instrumental? Because they're only saying, like, I'm Blue... Dub -de -dub -da. I feel like the fact that I got a blue car. There's a few lyrics. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> about his car and his house and stuff. That is. Uh, actually, it's a lot deeper than I remember. Uh, sorry. It's much what? deeper than I remember. Well, there's a whole backstory. To <laughs> there's a big backstory. You need to learn about how blue he was. And, <laughs> and actually, maybe he meant blue as in 
fucking sad. <laughs> <laughs> but then why did he have a blue house and a blue window? You know, because he had a sad. theme and he was running with stars. Oh, it, it wasn't was actually sad. blue, but the way he saw it was blue. And was a blue so Corvette. Blue. It was sad Corvette. Did he have a blue Corvette? He had a blue Corvette. Little He'd already mentioned And everything that. was blue for him. Yeah. And himself and everybody <laughs> around. To listen. <laughs> I prefer tubular belts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we knew it. I've got to get okay. you okay. You've got to lock okay. something in. Just okay. take a second. Uh, I say two is fact, three is ficked, and one is fake. I don't understand the difference between ficked and fake, <laughs> but whatever. Alright, we're locking okay. it in. Locking it in. So fake, fic, fact, ficked. We're going to find out. Last instrument number hit was it Chariots of Fire in 1982. I'm afraid uh, that is fixed. Oh. Um, it was the second last instrumental number one. Uh, the Miami Vice theme in 1985 <laughs> <laughs> was the last oh, time. Great. Wow. It's pretty good, that's pretty good. Uh, Where did Tubular Bell factor into that? Can someone please? <laughs> yeah. Can someone in the audience I don't know. I didn't, look, tubular I didn't look ahead and think that you might bring up Tubular Bell, so I've got no <laughs> facts for that. I've got no facts. I think from now on, always assume <laughs> someone will. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so number, number two, Boys and Men, more weeks at number one than Michael Jackson. You get a point here, that is fact. That oh. is fact. That's been 50 weeks, Michael Jackson, a paltry 37. What was he thinking? <laughs> like it was his choice, okay. <laughs> so you get one point there, and between Wham and his solo career, George Michael, Michael has oh. most number one hits. I'm afraid that's absolutely fake. Uh, the Beatles hold it with 20 hits. So there you go. So one point. I didn't know I was in this for the game. I thought I was in it for friends and things. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm in it for the game. There's no yeah. friends I'm here. I'm in it for the game now, I've realised. Well, I like to Beck yeah. about friendship. <laughs> <laughs> I think what Beck has realised that she's never going to dance again. Guilty feet have got no rhythm. <laughs> <laughs> Kill Whisper, George Michael. <laughs> At the end of our second round, uh, they've finally taken off. Both teams are on A score. And on three points, it's Andy and Beck, who are beating Nelly and Xavier on one point. Wow. Oh. Our final round, as always, is the bedroom challenge, where our teams are going to simultaneously compete to see who can put more Cheetos into their partner's mouth using only a straw. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And uh, this is for five points, guys, so this will win the game. And I didn't say this at the start of the night, but uh, tonight you are not playing just for bedroom glory. You are also playing for a signed copy of <laughs> Tubular Bells on Record. <laughs> is this? Um, and uh, when I say signed, it, uh, it has been signed by me. And, <laughs> and George Michael, remember that guy? Uh, he has signed this, so th that is what you're playing for. Now... You each have, uh, you have 45 seconds to try and get as many of these Cheetos into your partner's mouth using the suction of a straw to relay them across. Yeah, boy. Right. Um, so Nelly is going to be feeding Xavier. <laughs> I'm so glad I get to say that sentence. <laughs> and uh, Andy is going to be feeding Beck. Because I'm, I'm. And you're not allowed to use your hands. And you are not allowed to use your hands. That is right. I'm so really no hands. You will oh. be disqualified. Oh, shit. I'm really asthmatic, but I'm really good at eating Cheetos. So this is a perfect role for me. <laughs> This is your sport. Yeah. This is your moment. This is it. It's your time to shine. So five points on the line. Are you suckers ready? <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Three, two, one. Suck. All right. <laughs> it's the action pack start we've all wanted over here. <laughs> <laughs> well, Andy's been training all week for this. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. Look at that room over there! Look at that! I'm so sorry. Nothing, it's like a... It's like a mother feeding a baby bird over there. <laughs> Just spot on, Evie. What is You've this? You've only got 15 seconds left, Nelly. No! This bird's gonna die, Nelly. Five seconds! They threw in the no hands. Curveball. Always stop. And stop! Oh, oh, round of applause. Oh. Well done. Um, so, Xavier, you're looking very hungry over there. Uh, do you know how many you managed to hit? Zero. <laughs> Zero. None. As you threw in that group, like, no hands. It's like, wait, what? <laughs> We practice with well, you. Are you <laughs> How are you going to use your hands? Like, what are you no, going? no, holding the straw with your hands. 
That's how we and Nelly did. That's how, oh. that's how Nelly did it before. We had a damn pat. And then you guys were like, no, no, hands. Oh, great. Uh, so zero over here. So uh, what I'm saying is their fault. Not. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> and, uh, okay, you've got, you've got, how many did you guys get? Remember, you've got to beat zero. <laughs> <laughs> um, Beck, uh, do you remember how many you ate? Twelve. Yeah. I uh, just got to but, check. But I don't... <laughs> yes, twelve is more than zero. They are the winners of the top point. And the winners of the show and Tubular Bells. Oh, there you yeah. go. Sorry, guys. Sorry. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. And you get a copy of Because uh, looking at the end of the final scores, on one point it was Nelly and Xavier. <laughs> <laughs> the Eclipse on eight points, Andy and Beck. Yeah. Yeah. So that is the end of our Sleepover Club for another week. Thank you very much for joining us. My name is Dave Warnicke. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, facty fact. Hey, if you like that, and thanks for watching, you can click right here and subscribe. Or if you click right here, you can watch the next episode. As for me, I'm going to drink a pita colada because I'm rich now. How long do I have to pause there for? <laughs>